listen to you, to participate uh, on it, to stay on the phone with you and not just dismiss you. You don't want to see, you don't want them to see you as just another salesperson. How important is trust? How do we gain trust with people? Okay, we develop, we want that rapport, that commonality, that connection with people. That's why I always talk when Tanner was doing that role play before. I kept saying, um, you know, what is the um, uh, stroke and nurture? When I go like this, I mean stroke. When I mean like this, nurture. How do we make that connection, that bond? When you make a bond with somebody, if they like and trust you, they see some similarities. Do you ever meet somebody at a party and they say, yes, this, I, I, I read the same book, I saw the same movie. All of a sudden, you're getting closer and closer together rather than further apart. These are things you can do in sales. Trust. There's, when you have trust, do you have a blank check? You better, you better believe it. Hey, Todd, Some people, yes, sir. I, Tim here. I have a quick question. Could you just give us a quick example of the difference between a stroke and a nurture? I feel like the stroke is pretty easy for me to understand, but I don't, I'm not sure about a nurturing example. Let's see. A stroke and a nurture. Let me think about that. A stroke, this is where, why do we stroke people? A stroke defined is a sincere, underline those. Somebody put some notes in here for me. This is good stuff. It's since a stroke is a sincere compliment. Okay. Do you ever get a phony compliment? Oh, gee, that's a great looking shirt, uh, Tim. Wow. I, great job. Best looking t-shirt I've ever seen. You obviously have good taste. That's an insincere one. You have to be a thespian while you're using stroking. Not to be disingenuous or manipulative, but you, I always say you are responsible for the environment. You have to create a, 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 an environment. And when, you, when someone pays you a compliment, okay? I always talk about my good friend, Gordon, in San Diego. Gordon is the vice president of one of the large, world's largest stock and brokerage firms. He's a very successful guy. I, I know one thing about Gordon. Whenever he goes up to somebody and he does this perfectly, he says, take... Uh, um, who's a, who's a, hey, uh, Steve Zobro, you, you can hear me, right? Yes. Yeah. Steve, did you lose weight, man? You look, are you working out? You look magnificent. What, what have you been doing, man? Exercising all the time, doing the right oh, thing. Oh, you, you look fantastic. How much weight did you lose? 35 pounds. You, uh, good for you. Give him a round. Wow, 35. That's stroking. Okay, but you got to be a good actor when you stroke. A nurture is a stroke to the 10th power. A nurture is when you make that stroke emotional with the painting your picture, uh, your painting in their mind and their subconscious, or the story you tell. Okay, I, I you know, uh, you know, I always, uh, it's something personal. It's something you can have them really. What, what's the million dollar rule, Steve? I'll put you on the hot seat. Million dollar rule, most important thing I teach. People make immediate money, business no. decisions. No. Emotionally. Emotional. Oh, emotional. So if you can nurture someone to become emotional with a story or something you tell. I always tell the story. It always makes me tear up sometimes. When I was a little boy at school in PS 152 and I, I was part of the phys ed program. Someone got to beat the shit out of me every day. Okay. <laughs> and I'd come home to this, wonder, this wonderful mom of mine who's been God rest her soul for 30 years. And she'd give me a big hug. She'd clean me up, rip pants and everything. Give me some milk and cookies. Here I am, an old guy. I'm still talking about my mother in that one nurturing moment. How important is that? Can we create that in sales? What happens when we create that emotional nurturing moment in someone in sales? What happens? You have a bond. You got a bond. What happens when you get a bond with somebody? They make a decision. You close, you close them because all the good stuff comes together. Oh, boy, did you hit a hit. Boy, did you get me emotional, Tim, with that question? Do you see how one question, you got me on a soapbox here. Absolutely. Let me go back to, because time Thank you. Quick. Did I answer that? Yeah. To your Thank satisfaction? You. Good. Also, empathy. You've got to be a mind. What do you think? You have to anticipate what they're thinking and feeling and try to make a connection on that. Okay. See, you know, gee, gee, Tim, you know, your property's been empty. That, I hope that's not causing any stress on your family right now. An empty property, you're writing checks for the taxes and everything like that. God bless you, Yolanda. See, we see everything here. Here you go, young lady. Don't you love video? <laughs>
um, empathy is real. It's where you become a mind reader, not really. You just anticipate what you think they're going to say or do or how they feel. And if you do this often enough, you get pretty good at this and you ask the right questions or tell the right stories and you get closer and closer to that person. You can make so much money if you understand the skill set of direct sales and marketing. It is like a blank check. You know, when everybody's uh, at home right now, we're all watching our budget and everything like that. I always go back to this. All you got to do is get with a couple people every day and give good phone. That's the secret sauce, guys. Let me go back to my screen share here. Um,